Greetings, dear friends. This is Warren Litzman in Dallas, Texas. And I come to bring you the message of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, God's Son. Because He has the last message that will be given to people who have been born again. You understand that? There's a prerequisite for you getting out of this world and going to the Father's house. And that is, you must be born again. You must be born again. It's a very simple thing. It means giving up on yourself and giving yourself to Christ. Very simple. Anybody can do it. And the Holy Spirit will either will even be there the moment you decide for Christ. You'll have lots of help, lots of love. So I beg of you, give yourself to Christ. Because that's all that's going to matter in the end is Jesus Christ. When you get to heaven, that's what they're going to talk about all the time is Jesus Christ. We've got dumb people running around now finding something wrong with Christ, something wrong with religion, something wrong with the church. And if they don't soon accept Jesus, Jesus could come and they won't go back with him. You know where they'll go? They'll go into an awful period of time where the world will be turned upside down, where there'll be crooked antichrist to come. Bad nations will become worse and worse. But within seven years, most of them will, will stand before God and give an account. Let me encourage you to turn to Jesus. He's coming soon. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming soon. And my whole endeavor is to help some people get ready to meet the Lord. That's why I preach and teach on this subject given to us by the Apostle Paul. Because you see, the scriptures point out that Paul is the only one that knows this message that belongs to humanity in living in our world today. He's the only one that knows the message. He only, he's the only one that knows what to do because God raised up him and made him the apostle of this dispensation of grace. That's what he's doing. He's getting us ready to live in his house. Do you have the far off thought that somebody could live in the house of God after they die, go to heaven? Do you think they could go there if they were not saved, if they didn't love God, if they didn't know how God was working in their life? Do you think that God is so dumb as that, that he's just going to take everybody in? Well, there's a lot of foolish people running around in our world today saying, they either say that Jesus has already come, or they say that uh, in the end, God's going to save everybody. These are fools. They come up with their own doctrine. They can twist and turn scriptures, but they won't do it in my presence because you won't turn one scripture when you listen to me. It says what it says, and you must do what it says. One thing about the scriptures in grace, they're there, but there's no judgment attached to any one of them. If you don't believe it, you're the loser. If you don't understand it, you're the loser. If you can't make it work, you're the loser because there is ample evidence in our world today by people who are Christian, by people who know the final gospel, the gospel of Paul. There are plenty of people who know that, who can help those who say, we don't know anything about it. You won't go to the average church and find out either. You won't listen to the average preacher and find out either. If you're gonna learn Christ, you're gonna have to go someplace where only Christ is, Christ is preached. I have meetings here in Dallas, Texas. I also have groups that the Lord has established for me around the world, all the way to Australia, South Africa, England. I've got groups in those places, and they love the Word. They saw this truth long ago, that God was getting us ready to live in His house. So do you think He's going to take just anybody there? 
They may have made a few mistakes. They may have sinned just a little bit, but God will take them anyhow. He's a loving God. That isn't what the love of God means. The love of God comes in a statement. It comes in this word. It comes so that everybody could read it and understand it. If they don't know English, they can find the book that will tell them what it is they ought to believe. But you can't put it all. You can't mess around with it. You've either got to turn to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior, or that's the end. But the end is not a happy place. If you go into the tribulation period, which starts right after Jesus meets us in the air, and by God's great power, he draws all of us into his house. Next period is tribulation. You think you're having tribulation now? Here in America, we just have a lot of political fools and bad situations politically. We used to have God in these things. People who were Christians could run for an office and the other Christians would vote for them. Nowadays, the Christians don't even pray over who they vote for. They have no connection with whoever they vote for. But God has given us that connection if we want it. And if America would vote as God would move in their hearts, do you say as God a politician? He certainly is. He certainly is. You know how he became a politician? When they killed Jesus at the cross, God immediately thought every bad thing that happens is going to be blamed on him. I won't stand for it. I won't stand for it. Because he died to save them. He died that they wouldn't go to hell. He died that they might become Christians. Don't you see, dear friend? God had a plan. The plan is working right now. It's been working for 2,000 years. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried, dead. He rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. And over 500 people saw him and heard him talk. What am I telling you? This thing is real. There's not another religion in the world that can make a statement like that. Do you understand that? Buddhists, they can't make a statement like that. These people who think the Lord has already come can't make a statement like that. No other religion can make a statement about Jesus Christ. You can still talk to Jesus. He's still up at the Father's right hand. He's waiting to hear from you anytime. But he won't change his attitude. He won't change the word. He won't change because ungodly men say we're living in a new world. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. It's coming out of the young people wherever I go. We live in a new world now, so you can't trust the old gospel. You can't trust the Bible. This is a new world, and we need some new things to study and know about. That's a big lie of the of Satan. Big lie of the devil. Doesn't work like that. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus will never fail. That's the hope you can put in Jesus Christ when you choose him as your Lord and Savior. I encourage you today. Do that. Put your trust in Christ. Believe in Him as your Lord and Savior. Get in a church that preaches the true Bible, that preaches truth. Truth, as I've been saying this week, is a person. It's not something that's written. It's a person. Get a hold of that person. He's available anytime, any moment. You can accept Him as your Lord and Savior. I ask you to do that. If you've been listening to me a period of time, you hear me say sometimes at the close of a broadcast that I have many things that'll help you. But I've trusted the message God gave me. I've trusted the words that I speak. I've trusted the lines that I have brought out of Paul's message to reach you, to settle you, to cause you if you haven't accepted Christ to do it, even right now, you can do that. 
It's not a hard thing to do, but it is the only thing left to do. Will you hear me? Who do you think is going to save this world? You think our president, Obama, is going to save the world? You think that the Pope's going to save the world? Not if you read this book. And neither of them wrote this book. But you can trust what's written in the book. You can trust Jesus Christ. He said, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That's the meeting in the air. You're going to live with him in the Father's house throughout eternity. I urge you to begin to trust him now. Put, put your trust in Jesus now. Look up to heaven. That's where he is now. He's not in church buildings here. He's not in synagogues. He's not in big churches. He's not in big Christian crowds. He's sitting at the throne. And the only way you can get to him is to tell him you cannot save yourself. Now, those are the secret words that every soul that needs to be saved can say. You'll get results right there. What are the words? Father, I cannot save myself. I need help. The moment you say that, all the eyes of heaven will turn right at you. You won't know it, maybe, but heaven will see. Things in heaven will begin to open up to you. And when you begin to talk to Jesus, you'll realize that there's nothing you should fail to talk about. You'll find out that everything on your heart needs to be turned over to Him. You need to have a new heart. You'll get a new mind, a mind of Christ. That's what we've been talking about on this broadcast all this week. You'll get a new mind of Christ. You'll also get hope. I can't imagine that human beings would walk around in this world with politics, with education, with this, with the world who's getting worse and worse and entangling our children and young people up, believing that that's all that's left to do. I can't believe that a good sane person would continue to let that happen. How do you stop it? You accept Jesus as your Savior. You accept Jesus as your Savior. You quit listening to those who think they know. You quit listening to those who set up leadership in a nation, in a city, and tell you this is the way we're going to live. They don't know. They don't have the right to do that to you, but they'll take it. But Christ sits on the throne waiting for you to accept Him. The, the Holy Spirit is waiting to talk to you and give you understanding of what's happening to you. I can't do it. You're all different. But the Holy Spirit knows your differences and He can talk to you in a way that you'll find saving grace. Think about it. Turn to the Lord before it's too late. Accept Jesus as your Savior while there's yet time. Turn to Father God. He is the only Father existing in our world today that has anything to do with your life. Not even your earthly father has anything to do with it. Not even your relatives have anything to do with it. Not even the government has anything to do with us in your mind. But you can accept Jesus as your Savior and He will change your mind about this wicked world and the things that are happening in it. You may be a young person who feel like you can change everything in the world if I can just get my education and get out there. No, you can't do it. We've got people running the world now in an odd direction who went through school, went through college, and think they know something. But until they got out there, they didn't know anything. They didn't have truth. That's a person. They didn't have a savior. That's another person. Same person in another form. 
They didn't have the Lord at Calvary. That's another person. Same Jesus. But I could take all day talking to you about the things he's done for you. Don't put it off any longer. Begin to trust God. Put your trust in him. Live for him. And you'll never be sorry you did it. Got to go. My time is up again. Glad you tuned in today. Listen to me next time. This same place. God love you. Bye-bye.